Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, Frank from Crazy Farm Living. Uh, putting up some fencing today. So my wife wants some fencing around our property, but along the front of the property, she doesn't want the T-post wire fence because it doesn't look pretty. She wants something that looks a little nicer. And so what we went with was a one by six um, deck board attached to four by four posts that are set in concrete. And you can see here, I've done a, a run of them, but I wanted to kind of show you uh, how I got this in. So I first just took the tractor, drilled a whole bunch of holes, put the posts in concrete and leveled them up. And um, most people know how to dig a hole and put a post in concrete. So I'm not gonna cover that. The part I'm gonna cover is how to attach these things and what I did to uh, make it kind of run smoother, just sharing that. And so hopefully, in this 10 minutes or whatever this ends up being, uh, you'll get an idea. So these posts are, uh, they're all leveled. So I took a level line at night and I just ran it on the property so I could see exactly what was level all the way across. And then we decided to move the posts up or down, uh, like the boards up or down until we thought, thought we can get a, a good height where it's close enough to the ground for the dog not to get under and close enough together that a big dog can't get through but, uh, but wide enough that you can still see through it easily and not make the property look like it's, uh, you know, like a barrier. And so when we ran this level line along the post, you can see this little, this little mark right here. Every post has a mark right here. And this is level all the way across the post. So some of them are here, this far off the ground. Some of them are like way down here, right close to the ground. But the line is level all the way across so that the fence will stay level. And originally we were gonna put our first post here, our board here, but then my wife wanted it to be lower. And so what I did is I'm actually putting the first post two inches below that. And that's reflected in a jig that I made. And a jig is just uh, a something that I attach to here so I can easily get the boards all set so I don't have to remeasure every single time with the tape measure. I'm only measuring one thing in the very first cut. So when we first put this on, <laughs> these boards on, I had to take nails and put a nail here, 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 and set the board on it and have my wife visually inspect the distance of the boards. <laughs> Three boards, four boards, five boards, different heights. We just put a nail in there and then set the board on it so we could see until we figured out what we wanted. Then once we figured out that we want the boards to be, to have about a six inch space between it, I just measured the space of six inches plus the board. And then I just uh, stapled these to the two by four. And all this does is it slides. And so this already has a, one on it, but you'll see one without this. But I basically just line this up. You could see to the line at the bottom. And this is using to help hold up all of the boards. So when I mm -hmm. go start attaching them, it's easy to attach. So I'm just gonna take this and clamp it. Keep your jig in place. Keep my jig in place. I'm getting jiggy with it. <laughs> yeah, probably a little too corny. And we'll put this one on on this side. And again, if you come over to this side, and so everyone can see, all I'm gonna do is line up this line to the mark. The mark. The level mark. Yep. And then this should be level. Now all of these should be level with that on that side. Which makes it go a lot faster because you're not measuring and remeasuring over and over and over again. You gotta make sure that this is attached here pretty well because if it's not, you put your boards on there and some of the boards are heavy because they're, they still have a lot of, uh, the pressure treated so they still have a lot of moisture in them. And what happens is the jig slides down and then your whole thing's off. That sounds like your voice of experience. Then your wife makes you take the boards <laughs> off and straighten them again. So you have to do it twice. <laughs> Nobody likes to do that. So that's the, uh, that's putting the jigs on. So if you come around to this side, all I'm gonna do is like line up the boards on top of those and then screw them in and then they should all be the same. So the first board, you can see here we're getting really close to the ground. So I'm using about this third way. Hopefully the board will sit flat on here. And since the 
board is so low, I'm going to cut the first board first, but I'm not going to cut the rest to the end. So the first board I just measured from this area to the middle of this post, mm -hmm. and that gave me 90 and a quarter inches. And so I'm just going to cut this board at 90 and a quarter inches. And then we'll start putting these on. So I want my cut to be square. So it's straight along the side of the board. So I'm just going to use the square and then just put it up against the board and then cut along this line and uh, take my table saw or my, not my table saw, my circular saw and some safety first glasses <laughs> and put these on. Yeah. So I get that okay. extra cool factor, <laughs> cool points for being safe. There you go. And then I'm just going to line up where I need to cut and then hold this square here as I run the, the saw along. This board is ready to go on and in order to make things a little easier to do it myself I'm going to use a, a 16 gauge uh, nailer uh, to first tack them on and then now we're going to come back and pre-drill so we don't split the wood and then put some screws in so uh, normally I have my handy dandy wife holding these up there uh, <laughs> while do I do it so the she's cameraman's not, unavailable. She's not here. <laughs> well, she's here, but she's manning the camera. <laughs> so I'm gonna set this here and see if this one. This is this is how I get out of the hard work. Right? <laughs> just do in charge of the camera. So I'm just gonna set it on top of the jig. Put two little screws in or uh Little nails just to tack it on there. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. And now I'm just gonna put the rest of the boards in doing the same thing. With the exception of having my wife's assistance. So this is where having her assist is super helpful because she normally lifts these up all strong and stuff. And uh Make sure you put the ugly side on the end that's getting cut off. Okay, that looks good. This is where that jig comes in super handy. Right. you wanted to know. <laughs> now most people do three to four um, panels on these. We ended up going with five because of the height of the land as well as the height of our gate down there. Uh, when you put it all together three looked too low and uh, so did four and so we ended up going with five rungs on the fence and from farther away it looks really good and you can see down there are the that's the first batch that we already completed and what the whole fence line will look like and then eventually we'll paint it all white and seal it up I have some tools out. Uh, having the right tools and enough batteries <laughs> makes the process flow a little easier because I'm not switching and unswitching uh, the batteries because I only bought one or two batteries. So if you can, if your budget allows, and my budget doesn't necessarily allow at the beginning, but over time, you over time, up a little you know. collection of them. So, Ryobi right, 18 swappable batteries just makes things a little easier. Nice. So, I have all the boards tacked up now, and so uh, I'm gonna just pre drill them to get ready to put the regular drills in, and so. Uh, this may not be super exciting to watch, but 
Sometimes it's just nice to see you start to finish. And so now that I've pre-drilled it, I'm gonna take off the jig because when I screw it in, it's gonna pull it. And sometimes the jig will get really hard to take off. And in this case, this four x four has bowed just a little bit, just sitting out here as it dries. And so this board is pulled off the fence a little bit. You can see there's a little gap right here. And, the, and it's because this board is sticking out farther than here. So I'll take this off and when I put the screw in, it'll suck it in nice and tight. So see, I still have a nice flat board. I didn't have to measure in between each one. So I can just knock these out and I'll put the screws in. And so, uh, if you need to... Okay, so we're using these uh, four inch multi-purpose screws. They have this little star-like head on it and it comes with a bit and um, that's what we're going to use to put these on. And this is a uh, hammer drill so if you come across any really tight wood uh, it helps just drive the screw in without stripping out the head. makes the process pretty fast so hopefully I can get in 10 uh, runs in like two and a half hours of doing this and that's after everything's like prepped and laid out and, and uh, ready to go it's in the back of my truck already and so when we pick it up from uh, the uh, hardware store we just load it in the truck on the morning or the evening before and we just drive it right up and take it right off of the truck because the last thing you want to do is just move this stuff two or three times unnecessarily unless you like working out a lot <laughs> so some people on these you know they take the four by four posts and they uh they cut out the middle and they slide the board in that way um, you know, they buy things to attach the boards to. I just found it was easy just to cut the board right in the middle of the 4x4 post and then just screw it in. All right, then we're almost done with this section. Uh, before I get ready to do the next set, what I'm going to do is trim off all of these and that way when I put the next one in, I just butt it up to where this is cut. I'm sitting on the jig, and then I just cut off the little extra piece. So when I was putting the fence up, you know, I was going, oh, let's put the fence eight feet, eight feet apart. But uh, then you have to make sure every post is exactly eight feet. Because if your post is a little farther as it sets in the concrete or the auger moves over a little bit as it's digging, you know, um, it's just a lot more work and it takes a lot more time to get that perfect. It's just easier here to cut this and then set the next board off and cut. Yes, there's a little waste, but it's not a lot of waste. So we did these at about seven and a, seven and a half or, or just a little more than that. And then we just cut off the extra. Definitely goes a lot faster because you're not measuring over and over and over again. Yep. And it leaves you a little room for error. That way you're not having to tear everything out if it's not exactly eight feet or seven feet or whatever. And so what I do now is I take this, my circular saw, and I adjust the blade so it just barely cuts past this board here. And so when I cut, this piece would just fall off. I don't want to make it too deep. I don't need to like trench this whole thing with the big long line. And again, I'm going to use the square to like level it up. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Uh, I used to start at the top. But then I realized that when I'm cutting, sawdust would be here, sawdust would be here. So just easier to start at the bottom and then it's nice and clean going up from there. So I'm gonna eyeball this up. So I'm just eyeballing that it's in the center of the four x four post. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but really, you know, if, you're, if you have a really hard time eyeballing it, maybe you wanna measure it. 
but uh, for me it's just easier to do this and then I just run it along this the uh, square here like that I'm just gonna eyeball in the middle where it's looks like it's the middle of the post So it's easier to look at the top, hold your square, and then run it up from the bottom. Sometimes you get a really big, strong piece of wood that may have a knot in there. So uh, you gotta let, pull it out a little bit. You can run it up and down once you get the initial line cut. But for the most part, it's pretty simple. Now this is ready for the jig to do the next run. But before I do that, there's one thing I need to do, and that's cut this post. So I see a lot of people when they try to put these posts in, they try to make them exactly the same, like dig hole, put a little dirt in, lift it up. They're trying to keep their string line straight, which like we had a really long run, so our string kept bowing. So for me, it was just easier to make a jig that I can run this across. And then that jig makes it the exact same uh, cut all the way across. So that's So jig. we just put the 4x4s four in the ground and then whatever height they were, we just decided to cut them down to the right size. And so this just fits over the 4x4 four four post. And the main purpose of this is because I can't pass the saw through on one cut. Like I have to cut it all the way around in order to get this to come off. And even with that, I still need a little saw just to cut a little bit of square in the middle. So all I'm going to do here is just make sure this is level. And we're going to put a light on the top of this. It's a cap. You can take the saw and we'll just run it around. And the only reason why I have this here is so that one, it's cut the same height every single time. And two, I can just run this along here instead of trying to hold the square in. See how nice and straight that was? Like trying to eyeball that uh, makes for an uneven cut. I'm going to just do the back side here. And so this is almost cut. I'm gonna use this, it's not, hacksaw is not really for wood, but it's nice and thin and it fits in there and it doesn't require a lot of effort. <laughs> it's always gotta be one, right? <laughs> it's always one. I'm like, did I take the, okay, so I must not have. You got far enough. I must have not have cut far enough across. <laughs> that should have cut by now. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you adjust it when you did the side rails? I adjusted this to be lower. It was like this, where it was only cutting a small area. Uh, because I was cutting the boards how do you here. Use your saw? <laughs> so, yeah. So I cut all of these at the very end, but I'm trying to do it to show you that uh, everyone has opened up. So now we'll try it one more time. There's the top that normally gets cut off. Uh, so anyways, that's how you make these, and then the cap just sits over here. And uh, Pop that's the how jig you. Off. That's how you do the fence. So that's how this jig thing works. Uh, making these little wood things are just really easy to make the whole process substantially easier on you. So hopefully you learned something. And if you already knew it, then good job for you. <laughs> All right, so have a great day. Be blessed.